a lot of life happens in the living room, which makes it the perfect place for kids to learn life lessons. Do you ever find that bedtime at the end of the day isn't the most ideal time to tackle the hard stuff? I definitely do. So we try to be intentional and make time for that hard stuff on the couch before we're all exhausted. What should you put in your living room book basket? Here are some of my favorite books that help us grown-ups help our kids become good humans. All about feelings. So how are you feeling? Saying what it feels like can help. You could even give your feeling a color. I feel like there's a heavy gray cloud above my head. I'm feeling sad. My color is blue. When you have a feeling that you don't like, you can choose how you show it and what to do with it. This is the first feelings complete collection. Cautious Chameleon learns that trying to conform and fit in doesn't always feel quite right, but when he's brave and different and himself, that's when he's happy. Grumpy Tortoise woke up in a bad mood, but he finds that spending time with his friends is what helps him to have a better day. Steady Sloth is around a bunch of people who think that everything is hard, but he finds good things come from taking it slow and steady. Scaredy Cat is afraid of everyone, but he ends up learning he doesn't need to be scared of people because they just want to be friends. You can save money and get them as a collection. Sometimes people are not always what they seem, they're actually Worse. Like the wolf in the sheep's clothing. These stories are over 2,000 years old. They're still applicable and they're not going anywhere. If they learn them early on, they'll be able to apply them throughout their life. The race is worth running even if you don't win and even if you know you're not gonna win. Little Aardvark wanted to run the race even though Cheetah and Buffalo and Crocodile were all really strong and fast. She gets really tired but she never gives up. You don't need to be the fastest fastest, biggest, or strongest to join in and have fun. The What If Monster, Jonathan James and the What If Monster by one of my favorite authors, Michelle Nelson Schmidt. Some What If Monsters like to hang out and fill up our heads with worry and doubt. What if she laughs? What if she runs? What if she thinks you're not any fun? What if you're wrong? Asks Jonathan James. What if the chance I take in the end is just how I find my very best Friend. You need the what if monster plush so they can squeeze him and remember not to be afraid of the dark and not to be afraid of what tomorrow brings because even if it's scary, it might bring something really awesome. Upside down Sid. You might have a different interpretation for how you could use this book, but here's mine. My son has friends who are differently abled and I want him to know hanging out might look a little bit different, but it's still worthwhile and important to spend time and develop relationships, even if it means that you're going to have to do things a little bit differently than you normally would. He is upside down and everybody else is right side up. And sometimes he wishes that he had help and company. One day some friends accidentally smash his window in with a basketball and they say, oh man, we're gonna make that up to you, we'll fix it. But not only that, they turned everything in his house upside down so that they could hang out with upside down Sid and spend time with him and be his friend. Can I join your club? Doug wanted to make some friends, so he decided to join a club. He changed his appearance and the way he sounds in order to try and fit in. But over and over again, he was denied membership. So he started his own club. He let everyone in because you can never have too many friends. There are two sides to every story. In Room on Our Rock, you read the story straight through for one perspective, but when you read back to front, you can turn things around and get a different perspective. And in A Tale of Two Beasts, part one, from the perspective of a little girl who was walking in the forest and found a strange little beast, rescues him, but then he escapes and she doesn't know why. She misses him, but finally he comes back. We wonder why he came back and we find out when we read it from a terrible beast perspective. He was just hanging around, minding his own business when he was ambushed. Mind your manners. You know that day your kid comes home and repeats a word that they heard? You're pretty sure they don't know what it means. We have a page for that. Learn the meaning of words. Don't be crude. Squawk, squawk. So you don't end up getting in trouble for parroting words that are rude. 
It's unkind to hurt anyone's feelings, so take care with the words that you speak. Sing out all you like about sweet things, but keep mean, nasty stuff in your beak. Don't dither and slither, have a strong spine, and say sorry when you make a mistake. When you have a basket of books like this in the living room, you establish that your home, the living room, is a safe place to talk about the hard things, like sadness, disappointment, mistakes, feeling left out. So share with us, we wanna know which of these books would do the most good in your living room book basket.